ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we would like to make, together with Professor Jan Riedel, uh, coordinator of the Polish side of the network, European Network Remembrance and Solidarity, and um, uh, chair of our steering committee, uh, closing remarks um, to summarize all three days of the discussion. And then, at the end, I will invite you to the next symposium, tell you where it should be. And then uh, we, uh, we can wait also f for a uh, uh, small, um, small, small surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, during the last three days, we discussed um, gi taking as a starting point solidarity and resistance, those two uh, notions, uh, we discussed actually our current situation, our, um, our environment in which we are dealing with our projects. We asked why we do this project and for what and what we should do in, this, in the current situation with these tasks which we and our institution have. So we start with a presentation of two, even three witnesses of the history uh, and uh, showed you two, at least three different points of view, how to deal with the history and how to uh, think about the consequences of the history. Then we went into details and discussed the concepts of solidarity and resistance. Afterwards, tried to show you uh, some concrete projects, some concrete institutions, uh, and their versions of, uh, uh, of, 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 the, of the work uh, having behind solidarity and resistance. Then there was all, as usual, the time for memory places. So we, we were in shelter, in prison, and in a church, both connected with 20th century history, both witnessed uh, 20th, of, 20, uh, 20th century history, and uh, all three mm, uh, making a bridge between history and our current situation. And now, uh, today we spoke about art as a tool of remembrance uh, and as a tool of uh, giving solidarity and showing uh, resistance. And then uh, during last panel, there was the links to current situation and the war to the Ukraine. Now I would like to ask Professor Riddle to go into some details, and then we will, uh, we will invite you to the next uh, symposium, next year symposium. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, during the symposium on resistance and solidarity, which is now coming to, to an end, we have listened to many debates, many speeches, longer and shorter, but uh, uh, always inspiring presentations. Uh, it has been a lot of intellectual input that requires uh, thought and work, therefore, uh, please do not uh, expect that I will be able to present to you now ready-made solutions and finished results of our deliberations. Uh, on the first day, we listened to a fundamental discussion between three exquisite uh, intellectuals and political actors of uh, recent decades, uh, Ms. Carmen 
Megayon, uh, Mr. Piotr Naimski, and Mr. Micha Michael uh, Jantowski, who was moderator and mediator. The superficial conclusion of the uh, listener would be the 20th century Spanish experience uh, and the experience to, of the inhabitants of Central and Eastern Europe are complete, completely incompatible and even contradictory. Pacifism understood as a tendency to seek peaceful methods of resolving conflict is right, but as an imperative to act in practice, uh, for example, in the face of unprovoked and barbaric aggression, it is completely pointless because it practically serves only the aggressor. On a closer look, the experience of the inhabitants of Central and Eastern Europe and of Spain have a common denominator. I saw it quite clearly while watching the movie Spain in Exile. This common den denominator is the concentration, camp, uh, concentration camps uh, of Mauthausen and especially Gusen, where Poles and Spanish Republicans suffered and died side by side. The, the defenders of freedom, despite their differences, were victims of the same totalitarianism that killed people not because of what they did, but because of who they were, as our friend from Lithuania said. Today, Poles and Spaniards are working together to create a modern and dignified commemoration of their victims in these Austrian memorial sites. In the next part of the session, we focused uh, on the question of whether memory can be a form of uh, resistance and solidarity. The panelists from Hungary, Spain, Poland, and Romania have proven, I believe, that this uh, is indeed the case. Remembrance can be a form uh, of resistance as evidenced uh, by the uh, combating of commemorations of the victims of the dictatorship of, uh, dictatorship of Franco during its duration, as well as thousands of examples of fierce struggle of communists with people and organizations trying to commemorate, commemorate Soviet crimes and crimes of local communists. Remembrance is also an excellent platform on which solidarity can grow. Mm, it can be both discovering unknown or forgotten lies uh, whose reminder uh, generates an emotional sense of solidarity. This was the case, this is my reflection, for example, with uh, the Scholl siblings in Germany or in Bavaria uh, and the young members of Polish resistance movement. They were the same age, they were brought up and educated uh, de facto in the same spirit they fought for the same goals and ideals. They died at the same hands. And yet, they, these young Poles and the Germans never met and never collaborated. So only now, years later, we do discover their affinity and arouse moving, a moving sense of solidarity. Allow me one more reflection. Not only the, mo the memory of struggle, uh, victories, and or common suffering in, in the past can serve to stimulate the sense of solidarity today. A similar function can be fulfilled, I believe, by the memory of common mistakes 
omissions, and perhaps even crimes. This is the case of Poland and Ukraine. Both nations have done things to each other that they must be ashamed of. This memory and fear of repeating mistakes from the past is undoubtedly one of the most important reasons for the very intensive solidarity-based cooperation of our societies and governments today. A moment ago, a while ago, uh, we heard excellent presentation about the arts as a form of and vehicle of solidarity. Indeed, we have seen excellent examples of such uh, an influence of art in which the art car carries uh, uh, not only emotions, but also factual knowledge uh, serving the purpose of commemoration and solidarity. As it was rightly pointed out uh, in the discussion, art also has served totalitarian systems. However, I have the impression that we know now how to recognize this kind of manipulative use of art. Uh, for, for, for a few minutes ended a beautiful, uh, very important discussion on ethical uh, consequences and the lessons of 20th century history. I, I'm not able to summarize uh, this discussion. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Riddell. And now I would like to uh, thank all of you for being with us all three days for coming to Barcelona. And I would like to invite all of you to Warsaw next year. We decided to make the next symposium in Warsaw. It will be the second time in Poland because the first symposium took place in Gdańsk. But uh, next year we will meet in, you are meeting in, um, in uh, Warsaw. And I would like to show you where it will take place. Thank you, because, because um, it will be really a special place. It's, uh, our main partner is the Museum of Polish History, which is now under construction. Not the institution, but the building is now under construction, and you will see it on the short film. They are, they are going to open the building, not the main exhibition, but the building uh, September this year. And I hope uh, next year we will be uh, able to see at least a part of the, ex of the stable exhibition because they, they need one, see one year more or less to, uh, to do that. But it is probably the biggest, current biggest memory project in Europe. Thank you very much for being with us. Jordi, thank you for your help. Thank you to Eurom. Thank you to uh, uh, Foundation, Solidarity Foundation of the University of Barcelona. Thank you to University of Barcelona. And thank you to all of our colleagues uh, who made it possible that we have been meeting this time. Thank you. 
Well, I will be very brief and no ideal Spanish, just <laughs> to you. Uh, of course, uh, thank you to you and for this great idea to be here. And here has memory concept, it is and it has to be, it's a place, uh, it's an agora place too. An agora to discuss, an agora to debate, uh, an agora to learn from our past, but also for our present conflicts. An agora to share this uh, international universal concepts has solidarity, but also has resistance. And uh, well, it was a very good idea. Next year, congratulations. So maybe, maybe in some years too, we will come and we will have another meeting of discussions in a new Agora too, maybe in la, the new Memorial Museum at La Modelo Prison, we hope and I hope. Uh, and also to the participants and speakers. Gracias también a todas y a, y a todos, colegas también. To all the colleagues uh, por haber venido, for por having come here, for having withstand the whole three days, and also for following the discussions which have been intense and rich. And they have given us many reflections or thought, which in a way since 2012 we've been discussing in many of the agoras through Europe. Debates, which continue to be present, I think that the current conflict that we all wish to be finished in Ukraine, let's stop this Russian aggression, and as we have seen, and this has been a very live and intense debate about this same memory in Europe and this memory and remembrance that we wanted to fight from uh, Europe because the most interesting thing, as Robert was saying, is the multiplicity of memories and being able to work in different scales and dimensions, this type of memories which are transmitted, as you know, in the present, and of course, they depend on other media, such as art also, which are based in knowledge and the critical analysis of history. And in this university, we are also dedicated to this. And in a way, well, I don't know if we could present some conclusions. And he's switching to English now. And also a lot of work to do with the European institutions, European platforms as the House of European History uh, constants to, to real, no? to put the focus on these debates, not only, of course, uh, and to try to, to, be, to be so multi-liars no? and multi-perspective as soon as possible, as far as possible, sorry. Uh, pues muchas gracias uh, a los traductores, al equipo técnico, to the interpreters, the technical team, the y, team of the y, y esta casa, and RS, and thank you to the que, university bueno, for allowing us to host the congress here, I have the pleasure to represent them here, it's a place, it's an open, space, it's it's an open space, place for everybody, and it's open to you all and your institutions and you as a friends too, thank you very much.